Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show presented by Mercedes-Benz Electric Made Extraordinary. And the coronation is suddenly a competition. After two blowouts in Jersey, the Rangers now find themselves in a series after the Devils come back and win it 2-1 in overtime in Game 3 at the Garden. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios, everyone. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, and Steve Valiquette. Not sure what to expect tonight, especially after the Devils started 22-year-old Akira Schmidt in goal. But it's Dougie Hamilton with 8.24 remaining in overtime who scores the winner for the Devils. Yeah, you know what? You, you watch this game. The first half, a lot of energy, a lot of chances both ways. Second half, we were talking about this off air. It felt like the Rangers were playing not to lose a little bit. And, you know, they, they were pushing the game way more on the road tonight. They didn't really get to that level they had in the first two ones. Yeah, I didn't think they were moving their feet the same way that they were in Newark. It seemed to me like they were watching the play develop instead of moving fast and quick. For whatever reason, even in overtime, I didn't feel like they really had the jump that we've seen them have. So I'm sort of surprised. I, this is, wasn't what I expected. I expected they had a mature approach to the start of the game. And you'd think that they were going to be able to carry that over. But for whatever reason, it just didn't seem to click. And you get into overtime and, you know, you're seeing a lot of back and forth. But most of it was threatening towards the Rangers net off the rush. And this is a broken play off the rush that gets a second wave of attack here. And Dougie Hamilton has time and space to get this thing off. He really walks into it. And there's a lot of space up top because he's able to at least make that advance towards the crease. And the Devils, look, you're back in a series. I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I was overconfident. I thought... I thought the Rangers were going to smoke them tonight. I really did. Possible, Hank, that the Rangers were as well. Maybe with the fact that they weren't quite as much on their toes as they were. 5-1, five, 5-1 one, five, one on the road. Human nature being what it is, maybe they did bring a little bit of overconfidence. Uh, maybe, but I look at two things that changed for the Devils tonight. The power play came through for them and goaltending. That was two big factors mm -hmm. in this game. We were not sure on Schmidt. Young kid, hasn't played a ton, but he comes in and play really well. You got to give the guy a lot of credit the way he handled this situation. Yeah. And another part, Rangers were 0 for 5 on the power play right. after being 4 for 10 in the first two games. All right, so what looked different? To me, we didn't have the same level of movement. Uh, the players weren't skating as hard to win puck battles. They really didn't get into their setup and really make you feel like they were a threat the way that they were in Newark, where it was switches, it was recoveries, it was shots. It was attack. There was all attack. Yeah. But now I felt like they got outworked on their power play tonight. I really did. I thought the Devils' penalty kill outworked the Ranger power play, and that was not the case in the first two games. More than 190 minutes of five-on-five -five hockey without a goal against until Dougie Hamilton scored that, like you just saw, against Igor Shesterkin, 2-1 the final Devils over the Rangers on guard nice uh, Jack Hughes scored the goal for the Devils in this one Steve and um, it was as you had said Hank the power play goal that tied the game in the second period after Chris Kreider had given the Rangers the lead I thought the goal itself it was a little like the way that we've seen the Rangers beat Vitek Vanacek in games one and two where he sort of built the screen on himself and Shesterkin chose to go off the hip instead of over the shoulder but he sort of put himself into a bit of a uh, Kerfungal? Is that the word that <laughs> we use? Kerfuffle. Kerfuffle. That's the yeah. one that John uses. There you go. Now, the penalty. And, you know, Henrik and I talked about this, and Henrik made a really good point. If it was one punch, you get away with it. But you take three or four punches, and you're going to get a penalty. Uh, the shot itself, you know, I think that sometimes when goalies take penalties and they've got to kill that power play, there's a bit of a distraction there. I don't know. I wonder how you felt about that, Henrik. I knew that when I took a penalty, it felt different than one of my teammates taking a penalty. There's a bit of a distraction there. You're thinking, I'm responsible for this. We're in this position because of me. And Shesterkin doesn't take a lot of penalties, but I wonder, are you familiar uh, I, with that I feeling? I felt the same. Yeah. Uh, you know, you definitely felt the pressure taking a penalty. I, I totally agree with you. And obviously, when a player takes one, you, you're there to bail them out. But here you are, you have to bail out, bail out yourself, yeah. in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you talk about the shot, we saw it last night, Connor McDavid had t two times, kind of the same situation where they come in, and these guys, they're top in the league, shooting the puck, how they used to stick to snap that puck, it's just, 
if you don't see it, you're, you're not going to stop it. So the key there, obviously, you have to really fight to, to find it before he released that shot. All right, Henrik, you were right because you said the power play for the Devils came through, but so did the goaltending. Let's speak about Akira yeah. Schmidt because here's a guy who was put into the net at the age of 22 because Vitek Vanacek allowed nine goals plus the empty netter in the first two games. He walks into enemy territory, allows one against the team that had 10 in the first two. Yeah, it was interesting just doing some background on him today. Three years ago, he was playing in the USHL junior hockey. His first year in the USHL, he dominated. He had a pretty lousy second year in the USHL, dominated his third year. Not a great uh, career or at least length of work in the American Hockey League. He's played his best hockey in the NHL. And this season, you talk to the guys uh, from the Devils, they've all said that he was their best goalie out of the three, at least most consistent through the year when he played. Uh, the save that he did make on that chicken wing on Zabanajad, one-timer from the slot, that was his best save of the game. There were a lot of routine saves, but give him credit, I think he made a lot of the Rangers' shots look routine too. He was very quiet and comfortable. And one thing that I, and we were talking about, Henrik and I, was it looks great when it works, but goalies will always get uh, in, into a little bit of trouble if they look too calm when they're going through a losing streak. So it looked great tonight, mm -hmm. but I don't know how much the Rangers really tested him either. Well, I, I have to say, when I look at his game, what was impressive, he, he knows he's a big guy and he used it really well. Rarely did you see him overcommit to any situation. He moved smart, he was yeah. efficient. And you, you can see a lot of big goalies over-challenged at times in this league, but this guy, the way he moved tonight, really impressed me. The numbers stand out. The quantity was there. The Rangers had 36 shots on goal, so 35 saves for Akira Schmid, including eight of them in overtime. The only goal Schmid allowed on the night was to Chris Kreider, and that came early in the second period. Five goals now for Chris Kreider, the first Ranger ever to have five playoff goals in the first three playoff games. Uh, once again, this is where the Rangers were great in games one and two. It was at their defensive blue line. They had great sticks. They had great pressure. They controlled the rush game and were able to get a transition off of this. It started with Zibanejad hunting down Palat, and then he got a little bit of help from Kane, and Kane has a great stick at the blue line, and now this is Zibanejad and Kreider are off to the racers. There's certainly some back pressure here from the Devils, but because of the slide from Siegenthaler, it becomes a one-on-one. -on -one. And when you watch the play from behind Schmidt, he was actually lined up to the body of Kreider on that one. He was lined up to his body, not on the puck. And when Kreider shot it, the replay from behind the camera is pretty neat. It shows how he turns his stick and then goes high blocker on it. Yep. It was a nice shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, two things with that. Kreider in practice comes in with that speed and he can pick his corner. But a lot of times when he gets an opportunity in a game, it's full speed. Yeah. And coming in full speed and try to pick your corner, that's hard. So here you could see he slowed down and really took his time to put in the perfect shot. And also, that's his sweet spot, the distance. I know we mm -hmm. talked about this before, but his sweet spot for his shot is around that area where he doesn't get too close to the net. But his wrist shot is so hard, it's almost like a slap shot but he needs to fire it early. And because he could slow down and really take his time to, to pick his corner, it was, it was an excellent shot. That Ranger lead lasted all of seven minutes before Jack Hughes tied it, and Dougie Hamilton wins it with eight plus minutes remaining in overtime. 2-1 Devils over the Rangers at Madison Square Garden.